Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate for the first, for first six terms of a sequence um, <clears throat> when given some equations that are a little bit more difficult than the, the last video that I made. So um, basically, again, as, as you remember, when we're trying to identify a, or evaluate for the first six terms, basically what we're looking into doing is um, you know, finding the number, the number in the sequence given our rule. So you can see we have four different rules here. And remember, n represents the number in, within that sequence. So we want to find the first six. So if I want to find the first one, all I'm simply going to do is replace wherever I see an n with the 1. When I want to find the second number in the sequence, I'm just going to replace n with um, 2. OK? Um, so basically, that's all we're simply going to do. And I'm just going to work through each problem through this. Now, to, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of speak my way through it, uh, talk a lot about you know, what I'm doing, but I'm not actually going to show all the work um, you know, in there. But it is very important to know, because especially even when you're using a calculator, is the right way to type it in. That's why I wanted to make this video, because a lot of students, even if they're using a calculator, are still going to make mistakes on how they type it in. So anyways, 1 cubed is just going to be 1. 1 times 1 third is 1 third. Here I have 2 cubed. Ooh, I don't have that one. OK. So here I have 2 cubed, which is going to be 8. 8 times um, 1 third is going to be basically 1 third times 8 over 1, which is just going to leave me with 8 thirds. OK, just multiply straight across. If I want to do a sub 3, that's going to be 1 third times 3 cubed. Well, 3 cubed is going to be 27. 27 times 1 third. Uh, let's do 1 third times 27. Again, multiply across. 27 divided by 1 third is going to leave you with a, a non-fractional answer of 9. a to the fourth is going to be, um, duh, 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 duh. so it's going to be 1 third times 4 cubed. Well, 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, right? Which is going to be 64. Um, so therefore. That equals 1 third times 64 over 1. Multiply them across. You cannot divide 3 into 64, so that's going to just remain 64 thirds. Uh, 8 to the fifth is going to be 1 third times 5 cubed, which equals 1 third times 125. And that does not simplify either, so we just go 125 divided by 3. And then 8 to the sixth, which I don't know, I guess I ran out of space here. Um, six, yeah, sorry, a sub 6 equals 1 third times 6 cubed equals 1 third times 216. And um, therefore, that div does divide into 216 divided by 3 equals 72. So there's your first uh, six terms, 1 third. Uh, one third, eight thirds, nine. Oh, I guess I just did them over there. Yeah, six, 64 over three, 125 over three, and 72. All right, very good. Now let's go and move on to the next one. Here again, all we're simply going to do is plug in the one. So I have negative two raised to the first power minus four. Well, negative two raised to the first power is still just going to be negative two. Uh, minus four equals negative six. A sub two equals negative two squared minus 4. Now remember, when you take a negative number and you square it, it now becomes positive, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 is now positive 4. Um, so that's going to be positive 4 minus 4 is just going to equal to 0. a sub 3 is negative 2 raised to the third power minus 4. Well, negative 2 now to the third power, since it's odd, it's going to be negative. So negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 8. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. A sub 4 uh, represents here negative 2 raised to the fourth power minus 4. Again, anytime you're raising a negative number to an even power, it's going to become positive. Uh, but negative 2 to the fourth power is going to be positive 16 minus 4 is positive 12. And then we have oh, it's kind of interesting. A sub 5, which is negative 2. Raised to the fifth power uh, minus 4. Negative 2 raised to the fifth power is going to be odd. Um, so that's going to leave us with a, a negative 32. Negative two, 2 to the fifth power is 32. But it, since it's uh, negative, that's going to be negative 32. Minus 4 would give us a negative 36. And then a to the sixth is going to leave us with a negative 2 raised to the sixth power 
minus 4. Well, 2 to the 6th power is going to be 64. So negative 2 to the 6th power um, is going to be a positive 64. Minus 4 is going to leave us with 60. OK. All right, so now let's go get over to here. Now we have this n minus 1. Um, but it's going to be the exact same. You just got to follow your order of operations. Subtract the powers in the exponent first, then apply them as the exponent. So a sub 1 is going to be negative 3 times 1 minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 3 to the 0 is just 1. a sub 2 equals negative 3 squared, or 2 minus 1, which is uh, negative 3 to the first power. So that's just going to equal negative 3. a sub 3 is negative 3 to the, neg um, <laughs> to the 3 minus 1, which is negative 3 squared, which is just going to be equal to 9. Okay, um, a sub 4 equals negative 3 raised to the 4 minus 1, which is equal to negative 3 cubed, which is equal to a negative 27. We have a sub 5 is going to equal negative 3 raised to the 5 minus 1, which is equal to a negative 3 to the fourth power, which is going to be a positive 81. Remember, whenever you're taking a negative number, raise it to a positive, uh, po uh, even power, it's always going to be positive. Whenever you take a negative number, raise it to an odd power, it's going to be negative. And then last but not least, a to the sixth is going to be negative 3 um, times 6 minus 1, which is going to leave us with a negative 3 raised to the fifth power, which is going to be 243, negative 243. OK, um, one thing I just want to mention here, because this is the last one we have, is note that when you have a negative base of your exponent, notice how the terms are alternating. Um, you know, negative, positive, negative, positive, um, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay? And that's part of our alternating sequence. Just kind of important to know. Um, so now we have a sub n equals here. Do the last one. a sub 1 equals negative 1 half times 4 times 1 minus 1. I'm just going to write out these ants. Eh, I'll simplify the answer. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 4 to the 0 is 1. 1 times negative 1 half is 1 half. OK. a sub 2. Uh, that's going to be negative 1 half times 4 raised to the 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. one uh, 4 raised to the first power is 4. 4 times negative 1 half is going to be a negative 2. Well, let's it's going to be a negative 2. OK, so let's do a sub 3 equals negative 1 half times 4 raised to the 3 minus 1. Well, 3 minus 1 is 2. 4 squared is going to be 16. So it's a negative 1 half times 16. 16 times negative 1 half is going to equal negative 8. Uh, let's go a to the fourth here. That's going to equal negative 1 half times 4 raised to the 4 minus 1. Uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. 4 raised to the third power is going to be 64. So it's going to be a negative 1 half times 64, uh, which is going to leave us with a negative 32. Let's do a to the fifth power, which is negative 1 fifth, or negative 1 half times uh, 4 raised to the 5 minus 1. Uh, which is going to leave us with 5 minus 1 is 4. So 4 raised to the fourth power is going to be uh, 256. So that equals negative 1 half times 256. Um, so multiply, divide that by 2. That's going to equal negative 128. And then last but not least, a to the sixth, which is going to be negative 1 half um, times 4 raised to the 6 minus 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. 4 raised to the fifth power is 1,024. So it's negative 1 half times 1,024. Um, and that's going to be 512, or negative 512. Yeah, that's awesome. Whew. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate for your first six terms of a sequence. Thanks.